They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! It's a little cold today. Gotta keep my ears warm. The Cleveland Cavaliers can't seem to decide if they want to be in the past or the future. Ever since LeBron James left, the Cavaliers have held on to Kevin Love, blending the remnants of a championship core with some young pieces that are very exciting for their future. It's a strange team with a weird mix of veterans and young talent, and they need to figure out what direction they're going to go in over the next couple of years. What's up everybody, my name is Ethan, this is Courtside TV, today we're going to be talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kevin Love is one of the few leftovers from those LeBron James teams, and he has spent the last couple of years in and out of the lineup with injury, and when he has played, it's been a little bit frustrating for him because I'm sure he doesn't want to be on a team that's clearly rebuilding, and they probably don't want to be paying this amount of money that they signed him to, which it makes it even more puzzling why they decided to offer him that large contract extension a couple of years ago. Um, I believe they offered it to him after LeBron James had decided to leave. They wanted to keep Kevin Love in town, I guess, to remain somewhat competitive, and uh, they have not so far. You know, last season for him, um, he was injured for a lot of it, and they were bad. And then this previous season, he, you know, was a little bit healthier, and they were still bad. So. The Cavaliers are not a very good team, even with Kevin Love on the roster. It makes a ton of sense for both sides to look for a move for him. Um, his contract is just a little bit too big to be really interesting to a lot of teams. For about $31 million for three more years, that's a lot of money for a guy who's 32 years old. He's clearly been declining over the past couple of years. And, you know, it's just a lot of money to commit to a, a really a pretty unknown player at this point. We're not sure how Kevin Love will look on a contender again because he's not the same Kevin Love that was in Minnesota that played a lot of that bully ball and post scoring. He's now become more of a stretch five as he was with the, when he was the third option in Cleveland behind Kyrie Irving and LeBron. Um, and so his game has evolved a lot over the past couple of years. And how does he fit into another, you know, contending team? It remains to be seen. He had been linked to the Portland Trailblazers a lot over the past couple of years. Um, that move did not end up happening. And now that Portland, they uh, the Hassan Whiteside contract is expiring. I talked about this in my Portland video. Um, but now they kind of don't really have anything to trade for Kevin Love to match salary-wise. So uh, that, you know, that move seems to have passed us by so I'm not sure what team out there is willing to take a chance on Kevin Love maybe a team like the Utah Jazz um, or even the Lakers if they can make it happen I know that's kind of a stretch for the Lakers to be able to trade for a third star but it certainly wouldn't cost too much to get Kevin Love away so that they can call together enough salary to make it happen that might be an option for them um, but there's a couple teams out there that might be interested but uh it remains to be seen how much the Cavaliers value love, how much they wanted to get back in a trade for him, whether it's just going to end up being a salary dump similar to how they acquired Andre Drummond in the deadline where they basically just got him for nothing. Um, maybe the Cavs are just willing to, you know, trade him away for like some second round picks or a marginal young player or something just in order to get off that money and a contender will take him on because they think he can help them win now. You also have Andre Drummond, who, like I mentioned, he was acquired at the trade deadline for pretty much pennies on the dollar. I believe they gave up like a late second round pick. There was probably protections on it too, and then just salary to match. So it was basically just a salary dump for Detroit to get him to Cleveland. Um, and he has a player option for next year, which it looks likely that he will pick that up. Um, you know, like I've said a lot of times, things are still pretty uncertain with the finances and the pandemic and everything and how much teams are willing to go. Um, for certain players so it seems like it makes the most sense for a guy like Drummond with a large player option to opt in and get that cash and then enter free agency again next summer um, but he is you know he's an okay player I've never been the biggest fan of Drummond's game um, he seemed for the longest time to be sort of an empty stats you know good stats bad team sort of guy and I still stick by that assessment um, he you know he's just really big um, pretty athletic just a, just a really big strong guy um, and that allows him to get a lot of rebounds and putbacks and stuff like that um, he's certainly not a bad player but probably a little bit overpaid at 29 million dollars um, so you know Cleveland will probably just hold on to him um, and let him expire unless for whatever reason he opts out to work on an extension we've seen that in the past 
past with players with player options. They might, you know, decline the one year bigger contract to get a, you know, a lower annual value, but for a longer period of time for that longer term financial security. So if the Cavaliers do want to keep Drummond around, then that might be something that they decide to work on this offseason. Um, but if it was me, I wouldn't really worry too much about Drummond. I don't really know why they brought him in in the first place. Um, like I said, they didn't really give up much to get him, which I guess it's not that big of a deal. Um, but, you know, it's hard for me to see him in their future plans, considering he's 27 years old. Their core is like 20 and 21. So it, I, I don't really think that he is part of the long-term plan, the vision that Cleveland has to build another contender. But, uh, you know, something weird could happen with him this offseason. He could even possibly be traded again. Uh, not sure who wants to take on that money, but it is a large expiring contract, and we know that those are popular in deals. So, and he's, you know, he's a, he's, at least he can play. It's not like he's a expiring that's horrible, like a Nick Batum or a Chandler Parsons or, you know, guys of that caliber. He at least can play a little bit. So, uh, we'll have to see what happens with Andre Drummond. And as far as young talent goes, you have their two young guards who have been drafted, you know, near the top of the lottery over the past two seasons in Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. Um, Sexton is probably the better player of the two. He's been in the league a year longer, so he's a year ahead on his development. We'll have to see how Garland looks in his second season, but he was relatively disappointing in his first year in the NBA. Um, but, I mean, he obviously still needs a lot more time to develop. He's only 20 years old. Colin Sexton at 21. Um, but these are both, you know, they're fine players that you can build around. Um, it was a little puzzling why they selected Garland in the top five last year after drafting Sexton the year before, considering they're both point guards, uh, both play a relatively similar style. Um, so, you know, can these two work together in the backcourt long term? I am not quite sure. They're both, you know, a little bit undersized, not great defensively, um, a little ball dominant. So it's kind of, the fit is a little bit awkward. Um, but if they're, you know, they're developing together, there might be a chance that they can figure out how to make it work and play together. So I'm not going to write that off completely. Um, but both of these guys figure to be with the Cavaliers, at least for the next couple of years, barring a major trade, um, if one of them was packaged for like a, a star caliber player, which I don't really see as a possibility for Cleveland right now. Um, so it's looking like this is the backcourt of the future for the Cavs. Um, and, you know, it's it's okay. It's pretty good. Like I said, the fit is a little bit weird. Um, but I think that they have a chance to work it out and make it happen. Um, but that, you know, that pretty much rules out them taking the guard and with their fifth overall pick this year. So I don't imagine that uh, LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards would be going there. Not that either of them would even be available at five. Maybe Ball, but uh, that's you know, a topic for another day. Um, but, you know, they're probably going to take a big man or a wing uh, with their fifth overall draft pick, considering they've drafted these two guards in the lottery the last couple of seasons. So let's take a look at their cap sheet and potential offseason plans for this team. Um, they have most of their guys coming back. Um, they're not, you know, they don't have many, too many key free agents. I did mention Drummond's player option. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that. But assuming that he does pick that up, um, they're going to be right at the salary cap line. So they're not going to have too much cap space. Um, and they're going to be, you know, they don't figure to be big players in free agency anyway. Um, but with, with Drummond picking up that option, they have a couple of veterans such as uh, Tristan Thompson and Matthew Della Vadova, both of whom will likely go elsewhere to continue their basketball careers. Um, Della Vadova is a guy who has been up and down over the past couple of years, really hasn't been super good ever since that run to the finals in 2016. Um, and on that expiring contract, he will probably go, if he doesn't sign with a contender, then it'll probably be back overseas for him. Um, not sure if there will be a team that will offer him a veteran minimum at this point, um, but if there is, he'll probably stay. If not, maybe go back to his home country of Australia. Tristan Thompson will sign with a contender, probably on a mid-level exception or a veteran minimum deal. Um, that seems like pretty good value for a guy who, you know, has been pretty solid over his career, puts up some good numbers, um, and at only 29, he's still in the prime of his career, so he'll probably go sign with a contender. Um, and then after that, Ante Zizic, who at 23 years old hasn't played much for the Cavs. Um, you know, he not really consequential whether he comes back or not. Um, haven't really seen him play too much, to be honest. Um, and so that's just kind of if they want to bring him back for depth or if they feel like he has some potential left at only 23 then sure if not whatever um and then jordan bell is listed here as an expiring i believe that's actually inaccurate um he signed like in june over the summer 
um, to go to like part of their their camps and stuff. Um, and I believe it was for multi a multi year deal. Um, so I just don't think they have updated salary information for him. Maybe we're not sure of the exact terms of the deal or whatever. But I believe he is signed for, at least for next year. Um, and if not, they'll probably bring him back after you know he came in and played for them in the off season. But he hasn't actually played a game for the team yet. So. Either way, Jordan Bell, not super consequential, into the bench type of guy. Um, and then as far as young talent goes, um, you have guys like Dylan Windler and Kevin Porter, um, who I mentioned also, you know, Colin Sexton and Darius Garland, of course. Um, those are guys who they're likely going to keep around because I don't foresee any big trades uh, coming and so I would imagine that both of those guys will stay. Windler is, you know, um, did not play his rookie year, spent a redshirt season, uh, was injured, but was one of the better shooters in last year's draft. So we'll have to see if he becomes anything. And then Kevin Porter has also had some injury scares and stuff like that. Um, but he has been a solid young player as well. Um, and so he, we'll see if he, uh, you know, comes back and gets better. He likely will at only 20 years old. He seems like he'll be a nice piece as they continue to build this young roster. And then as far as trades, um, you have a couple guys who are on pretty tradable deals. Larry Nance, Dante Exum, and Chetty Osmond. Um, in, in the case of Nance and Osmond, I think both of those guys are very possible trade candidates. Not sure if Cleveland will decide to trade either of them, um, but they are both certainly pretty valuable on those contract numbers. Both still young at 25 and 24, um, and so they still have some value or sorry 25 and 27 for nance excuse me um they have they have some value to contenders um if you know some team wants to bring them in on those those contracts are both very palatable at 11 million for nance and only 9 million for osmond and that contract is also descending over time so less and less each year for the next like four seasons um and so osmond specifically him i could see him having quite a bit of value to a contending team uh just because that contract is seems like a really great deal for uh you know a guy who is still young and has shown flashes and i thought he's actually been pretty good for the Cavs over the past couple of years so any contender who would like to bring osmond in i could certainly see him potentially being thrown into a kevin love deal as maybe a sweetener into to match salary or whatever or if they you know if the Cavs feel like they want to give up on him and they can get something good back i would not be surprised to see that happen um and you know osmond to me is one of the more intriguing names on the trade market just because of that contract and he is still a young player and i think he is pretty good so i'll have to see if anything comes of that dante exum is on an expiring contract for about 10 million uh that is another guy who i am not the biggest fan of um i have watched him a lot with the utah jazz and it seemed like every time he would bring the ball up the floor he would turn it over like make a dumb pass or dribble it off his foot or something stupid um and so i'm just not the biggest fan of his game he's pretty much been a draft bus over the past couple of years struggled with injury as well um just you know had a pretty rough start to his career for dante exum so um, I can't imagine any other team would be interested in trade, taking him on in anything other than a salary dump. Um, the Cavs traded for him. It made sense at the time of uh, giving up Jordan Clarkson for a guy who had some young talent, but he just really hasn't shown anything so far in his career, and it's getting too late for him to prove whatever else he has left. So on that expiring contract, you know, if the Cavs can find a taker for it, sure. If not, then just see what he can do with them. But that's pretty much all I have in the way of trades. Um, just looking for a move for Kevin Love. And then, you know, if you can get some good offers on Nance, Exum, or Osman, I would anticipate the Cavs to listen to those and then hold on to your young talent and keep developing it while letting your veteran free agents walk. So what would I do if I was Cleveland? Well, I think I've kind of mentioned a lot of it already, but one search for a trade for Kevin Love, even if it's just a salary dump, get him off the roster. It's not worth paying a guy who is 32 years old, doesn't fit your timeline, and you're actively still trying to be bad. So get rid of Kevin Love. It's just not worth it to keep him around at this point. Any kind of taker you can find, unless you have to give up your own assets, because you don't want to give up your own assets, especially for a team that's still rebuilding. So they're going to have to get rid of love and i assume that they will probably find somebody who's willing to take him um if you can get back expiring contracts and you know a pick or two then that's certainly a deal that i would do you know don't ask for too much it feels like their asking price has been too high over the past couple of years i think it's time to settle guys it's it's over just trade him all right uh and then andre drummond 
I wouldn't really try too hard to extend him. If he picks up the player option, cool, just run it back for another year and then uh, let him leave. I don't think it's really consequential what they do with him either, considering, you know, we just saw what his trade value was and it was a bag of chips. Um, let Thompson and Delvadova go and then just continue to, uh, you know, accumulate young talent, uh, get whatever you can get in the draft. Number five overall, I like Obi Top in there. Um, I like Isaac Okoro there, um, you know, a couple of those guys, if you can get your hands on those, I would not be upset about any of that, um, and then as well as just, you know, like I mentioned, continuing to develop that young talent, see what you have in Dylan Windler, see what you have in Kevin Porter, um, and then just allow Sexton and Garland to grow more naturally next to each other, I don't think it's time to do a panic, you know, all oh, these guys can't play together, gotta trade one of them, it's not time for that yet. Um, you know, maybe in a couple of years, if they've proven that they don't work as a backcourt, then that's a move you can make. But I think it's just, you know, best course of action to just stick it out for now. Um, this team is going to be bad again next year. That's fine. You know, just getting those young pieces and developing that talent. Um, and they, you know, they're probably not going to be a great team over the next, like, two to three seasons is when they can realistically start thinking playoffs again. Um, it's been, you know, it's already been kind of a long rebuild for Cleveland. But I think the best thing you can do to accelerate it is get rid of Kevin Love. Um, and even if you can get, you know, a decent pick or a young player back for guys like Larry Nance, especially because he's a little older. Um, Chetty Osman, I think, has a little bit of value, like I mentioned before. Even though he does sort of fit the timeline, um, if you can get something good, I think it's probably just more worth it to trade him now. Um, and then Exum as well, if you can get anything back for Dante Exum that maybe is a little bit younger or a piece, just clear that salary away, then that's fine. Um, but that's basically my plan for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, it's it's kind of a long road ahead, but it, it, that's just the way it is for a lot of these teams at the top of the lottery. Um, just don't, I would, like I said, you know, I've cautioned a couple other teams on this, but don't try too hard to accelerate the rebuild by bringing in veteran pieces at the expense of some young talent, because I think just the best thing you can do is just accumulate some young pieces over the next couple of years, and then, you know, make, you know, maybe one or two win down moves if you have too much young talent at that point, and then you can realistically start thinking playoffs in the Eastern Conference, but uh, you're going to have to figure out a way to get a star in there, so... That's all I have for you today on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like I said, we're going to be uploading all week long. Um, this video is going up on Wednesday for the Cavs. And then I believe tomorrow we're going to have the Chicago Bulls for Thursday. And my plan for Friday is for the Charlotte Hornets. Next Monday, Minnesota Timberwolves. And Tuesday, we're ending with my team, the Golden State Warriors. So that's the plan leading up to the draft. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.